Sure, everybody sees. We see images from our eyes, memories from the nose, visions through our ears. Our senses are the bottleneck to perceiving the world, and many other species have much more acute senses than we could hope for. What we can see, however, brings beauty, lets us function independently, intelligently, and has helped us survive a million-year climb near the top of the food chain. Our earliest theories about how the eye works by Plato in the 3rd century BC involved Superman-like ray emissions bouncing off objects in front of us. Thank the gods it was Aristotle's camera obscura invention that quickly rejected the old geezer's theory. Since then, millions of schoolchildren have learned and forgotten how the eye really works. The human eye channels light and images to the retina, an array of millions of light-sensitive cells. There are two types of these cells, rods which detect red, blue, and green light, and cones which detect light and dark environments. Those cells actually convert the light rays into electrical impulses which pass through uh, the optic nerves into the brain in the uh, occipital lobe that is, um, then processes or converts those electronic images into what we perceive as sight or vision. Many of the color-sensitive cone cells are situated in the middle of the retina to give us a higher acuity during daytime environments. This pushes the rod cells from the center, making it hard to look directly at very dim objects when it's dark. That's why you must sometimes look to the side to see a very dim star at night. We've come a long way from our ancestral relatives. The first evidence of light-sensitive organs hail from the Cambrian Explosion, a rapid burst of evolution 530 million years ago. Light-sensitive eye spots on single-celled organisms could sense day and night, helping creatures stay out of harm's way, but that was it. This type of eye still survives today in many bacteria, and notedly in snails. Another few hundred million years later, the ultra-complex light-sensitive organs like ours and other predatorial species began to take shape. The human eye is more complex and capable than the best video equipment available today. It's the eye, however, that helps to shine the way to more powerful imaging technologies. So yeah, we're pretty awesome. We should feel lucky to have been born into such privilege. But for you, it's probably not enough just to be thankful. So open your eyes and sound sensitive organs, and let's spend the next 5 minutes and 37 seconds answering, Why do we see? Did I say Jay Todd again already? That, that you just that? did. Okay. <laughs> most of my work now is very saturated, very vividly colored. Most of my fine art is oversaturated with everything that's, that's in the palette. Seeing in color, I think that uh, I, um, the fact that everybody, that the, the majority of people um, have wearing glasses, I, I think that there is a an importance in seeing. You know, th th there's always that fact that once you lose your sight, your hearing, your sense of smell, taste, all become more aware, more acute. Um, I, I think that we do place a heavy emphasis on sight um, and then therefore once our sight star starts uh, waning that we, we go to turn to glasses to, to correct that. We always wait until the last minute of being able to, of going with uh, earpieces to help our, our hearing but yet we jump right away on, on sight. The experiment. We use our eyes to see things. Even our other senses, with the help of technology, can be used to see. Of course, we also use machines to see things we can't sense naturally. MRI machines are used to scan structures inside the human body. Radio antenna help to map the cosmos. Chocolate candy bars can see microwave radiation. The materials. A microwave. Any size oven will work. It's the microwaves themselves we're trying to see. Candy bar. Be sure to use a chocolate candy bar filled with delicious caramel. Place the bar in the microwave for about 30 seconds. Think about your favorite animal. Add 9 to the corresponding number of the first letter of that word. Recite pi divided by this number to the fifth decimal place. By this time your chocolate should be done. What you see should not astonish you. Microwaves emitted inside a microwave oven are standing waves. When the length of a chamber is equal to a multiple of the wavelength of the emission, standing waves are formed. 
points along the wave will overlap with others, amplifying itself each time it passes by. In the oven, this creates hot spots inside the chamber, the distance between which are about 12.2 centimeters, the wavelength of a microwave at 2.45 gigahertz, traveling at a speed of 299,792 kilometers per second. It may help to frame your creation. My name is Dwayne Halton. I'm an internal medicine physician doing primary care. The field of imaging, um, particularly in the medical field, is, is it has become very um, diverse. We use um, everything um, from the simple x-ray to much newer things as the MRI, as well as nuclear scanning to make diagnoses as simple as pneumonia to um, occult and very small hidden cancers. Um, quite fascinating and it's a field that's rapidly growing. We see because we have primate minds. Primate minds need sight to hunt and survive. We are hunter-gatherers by nature. Our brain needs to be stimulated visually to sate this carnal desire. Today we sometimes take this to the extreme. Sight may seem like an accident on account of all the different types and capabilities of eyes across so many species. What is unique about humans, however, is that it has helped us create great art, civilizing us, helping us invent new technologies that allow many of us to skimp a bit on the manual labor and work on self-actualization, helping to advance the human species in new ways we were not specifically evolved to do. Without sight, it would be quite hard to, um, um, to negotiate uh, our world. Obviously, it's, it's important for most of us. Most of us could not do our job without sight. In my case, um, sight is, is paramount in being able to assess and diagnose um, from the initial impression of the patient as to whether or not they're ill, um, mildly, uh, moderately ill, or severely ill, to actually being able to, in the case of um, skin lesions, um, skin cancers, rashes, um, I would not be able to, to begin to diagnose without being able to see um, the condition. And, and we tend to um, follow things that we think is beautiful and, and uh, look away from, from ugly, um, although I guess nobody can turn away from a train wreck for some uh, reason. But we see because we, uh, we rely on sight. And, um, less on smell and touch and feel. We, uh, we see because we, we like to and we buy our glasses because we, we want to see better. We want to see clearer. We want to see with more visual uh, clarity. So um, we, we see because we want to, we need to, we have to, and we, uh, we, we want to see everything that there is. Intelligence is really the culprit here. That, along with our senses and our other physical advantages, have gotten us to where we are today. And in the end, our capabilities may simply not be enough to go any farther, but that hasn't been enough to stop us yet. The future is a long way to see, but we have the eyes for it.